A visit to Lisbon wouldn't be complete without seeing the Pedrao dos Descobrimentos Monument and Belém Tower. Between the two, close to the tower is the Lusitania Hydroplane Monument that commemorates a significant achievement in aviation history. The monument in Jardim de Torre de Belém pays homage to two of Portugal's greatest aviation pioneers, Gaga Coutinho and Sacadura Cabral. The monument, dedicated to their historic transatlantic flight in 1922, takes the form of a full-size replica of the hydroplane, Lusitania. The sculptural work was created by Master Domingo Suarez Branco and was inaugurated on October 15, 1991. The base of the monument is an elegant concrete plinth lined with granite, which supports a stainless steel replica of the original hydroplane. Inside the airplane are bronze full-size busts of the aviators, modeled with realistic features, as if suggesting their presence. Gargo and Sacadura's flight was a remarkable feat in the annals of aviation history. It marked the first ever transatlantic crossing by air from Europe to South America, and cemented Portugal's place as a leader in aviation innovation. In 1921, Portugal acquired Ferry 3D airplanes, with the first being modified by Coutinho and named Lusitania. This seaplane was equipped with several innovative features, including a directional gyroscope and a bubble sextant, which were invented by Coutinho. This aircraft was then used for an attempt to fly across the South Atlantic. On March 30, 1922, the two Portuguese aviators began a journey that took them from Lisbon to Brazil, arriving on June 17 completing the first ever aerial crossing. This was an arduous and dangerous journey. The aviators faced several challenges, including harsh weather conditions, unpredictable oceans, and limited navigation aids. In addition, the seaplane was not designed for long-range flights, and its engine was prone to failure. Despite these obstacles, Coutinho and Cabral persevered, relying on their ingenuity and skill to overcome the challenges they faced. The Lusitania took off from the Bom Sucesso naval air station beside the Belém Tower. Their first stop was on the same day, when they arrived at Las Palmas de Gran Canaria on the Canary Islands. It was only on April 5 that they were able to resume, with the flyers soon arriving at São Vicente Island in Cape Verde, covering a distance of 1,370 kilometers. The airplane needed some repairs here, but was able to take off on April 17 and fly on to Praia on Santiago Island, before reaching the St. Peter and St. Paul Archipelago in Brazilian waters on the same day. This portion of the journey covered a distance of 1,700 km across the South Atlantic and relied solely on Coutinho sextant with its artificial horizon. Unfortunately, upon landing in rough seas near the archipelago, the Lusitania lost one of its floats and sank. The two aviators were rescued by the Portuguese Navy cruiser NRP Republica, which had been sent to support the aerial crossing. The aviators were then taken to the Brazilian Fernando de Noronha Islands. The enthusiastic response from both the Portuguese and Brazilian public led the Portuguese government to send another Ferry 3 seaplane to complete the journey. This new aircraft was named the Patria and arrived at Fernando Morona on May 6. After being refurbished, the Patria took off on May 11 with Coutinho and Cabral on board, flying to the St. Peter and St. Paul archipelago to resume their journey from where it had been interrupted. However, an engine malfunction forced them to make another emergency landing in the ocean and the airplane was lost. The two men drifted for nine hours until they were rescued by the British cargo ship Paris City and returned to Fernando Norona. A third airplane was sent out to complete the journey. Named Santa Cruz by Mary Sayao Pessoa, the wife of Brazilian President Epitacio, shown standing on the right in this photo. This airplane was carried by the cruiser NRP Carvalho Araujo and on June 5, the Santa Cruz was placed in waters by Fernando Norona. Coutinho and Cabral resumed their journey from here, flying to Recife then to Salvador de Bahia, then to Vitoria, and finally to Rio de Janeiro, arriving on June 17, 1922. 
They ditched Santa Cruz in Guanabara Bay before being welcomed as heroes by large crowds. Today, the only remaining aircraft from the journey, the Santa Cruz, is on display at the Maritime Museum in Lisbon. Although their journey lasted 79 days, the flight time was only 62 hours and 26 minutes. Yet, this flight was a major milestone in aviation history, and was greeted with widespread acclaim and celebration. The success of the flight demonstrated the potential of aviation as a means of transportation and communication, and inspired other aviators to attempt similar long-range flights. It also marked Portugal as a leader in the field of aviation and helped to establish the country as a hub for aviation innovation and progress. The legacy of the first aerial crossing of the South Atlantic continues to this day. The bravery and ingenuity of Coutinho and Cabral inspired future generations of aviators and paved the way for further advancements in the field. The flight serves as a reminder of the potential of human perseverance and ingenuity, and as a testament to the progress and innovation that can be achieved through collaboration and determination. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.